Okay. So unmute you, but unmute yourself when oh you mute yourself. Unmute yourself if you have any questions. Be free. Okay, so we are um second section of Mrs. of uh, Der Hashem and we are chapter four um and first first Mishnah so to speak first part of the chapter four two four one okay so one of the deepest concepts of God's providence involved Israel and the other nations okay so interesting not only he says that um divine providence is something very deep already and almost impossible to fully grasp but he says specifically even the concept of israel and the nations and god's providence with it is even more deep so let's see what he's going to reveal to us with regard to the basic human characteristics the two appear exactly alike from the Torah's viewpoint, however, the two are completely different and are treated as if they belong to completely different species. Now, obviously, it's very to jump and start saying, oh, you know, what is he talking about? It almost, almost sounds racist. <laughs> but as we know, um, the Torah is the last one to be a racist. On the contrary, and Judaism is the only religion in the world that says you don't have to be a Jew to get on about you can be yourself and therefore um, that's not what it means but we have to understand that we are like two different species meaning that we're two different powers two different categories is like saying oh yeah we know we we look like meaning um i look like a man and you look like a woman yeah so we we, we look very similar uh, we both have hands, we both have, however, if you start thinking that the man and the woman is the same, no, it's two different species. And actually in Kabbalah, the way they refer to the Jews and the nation is as husband and wife. <laughs> so, because one of the idea or la going to be elected to the nation is that we, we, we play a male role of giving uh, the Torah, give, teaching the Torah, give, giving clarity and spirituality to the world. So the world is the receiver, so it's like the woman receiving from the husband. Um, so we see that uh, it's, it doesn't mean at all in, in a derogatory way. It means it in a very, uh, in a way that we need to understand really what, what the qualities and what the, the mission the, the purpose of each one of those two species. We will now delve into this concept, explaining in which way the two are alike, as well as in which way they are different. So he says, before Adam sinned, he was on a much higher level than contemporary man, as discussed earlier. In that state, man was on a very lofty level, fit for a high degree of eternal excellence. If he had not sinned, right, because we learned that at the, in the first chapter, in the second, uh, in the, yeah, first chapter, man would have simply been able, able to elevate and perfect himself step by step. So we have got straight into spirituality, eating from the Yitzhakim and little by little elevated and not fall with the Yitzhara in the, in the physical world like ours today. He would have then given birth to future generations while still in that state of excellence. Their number would be accurately determined by God's wisdom, depending on how those enjoying his good should best be perfected. All these future generation will have then shared this good with Adam. So in a way that is to say, you know, because there's different discussion about who was the first Jew. So my first, my, my claim is that the first Jew, first Jew was Adam. Adam Rishon was the first Jew. Because what, what Avram is trying to do the tikkun of Adam Rishon. So he's trying to go back to the level of Adam Arishan, meaning that being a Jew is being in possession of that special neshama and that connects you to the entire world and to actively um, use one's potential 
to elevate the world and to come close to God. So that was, Adam was on that level. However, he kind of lost, uh, he lost it. He, he, was, uh, he was like the carrot, so to speak, right? Um, so he cut off his soul, so to speak, and now there was a need for someone to gain that soul back and start or continue what Adam and Sean had not done. So, um, so, but, so technically, if he had, Adam and Sean had not, had not seen, the entire world, everyone would have been Jewish. It would all have been called one nation called Israel. Right, and um, therefore we, there was never supposed to be Jews and non-Jews, so to speak. Never supposed to be is a, is a big word. Where right? Hashem has His plan, but um, if we follow the, 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 the system of how things were working, it was everybody was supposed to be Jewish. Or okay. he would have then been given birth to future generation while still in that state of excellence. Their number would be accurately determined by God's wisdom. And uh, depending on how, okay, so I read that. Right, so all this future generation will have then shared his, this good with Adam. God had also determined and decreed that all these generation that would have been born of Adam should exist on various determined levels. Some generation would just be primary while others would be secondary like roots and branches. So you have the trunk and then you have the branch and then you have the fruits or the leaves. And um, so it doesn't mean is the leaf or the branch uh, or the fruit more important than the trunk? No, they're all part of the same thing. Is my hand more important, my right hand than my left hand? No, now there are some organs like the head and the, the heart that are vital and play a major role. I can technically live without my hand, although that's not uh, the ideal, but it's, um, it's really one, one global thing. So there are different levels and, um, and each one has a specific purpose. Later generation would stem from the earlier ones and share the characteristics like br branches stemming from a tree. The number of tree and branches, however, was determined from the very beginning with the utmost precision. Okay, now, when Adam sinned, he fell from the highest, from the, his original high level and brought upon himself a great degree of darkness and ins insensitivity, as discussed earlier. Mankind in general also fell from its original height and remain on a degraded level where it was not at all worthy of the general of the eternal high degree of excellence or originally destined for this destined for it so uh, here it is a tricky there's two ways really to understand it um, and I guess I will have to discuss it with my Revit but I know that it's one opinion um, one opinion is that everybody comes from Adam, right? That's the mo most accepted opinion that every human being comes from Adam. However, those are not all the opinions. There are many opinions, and I can even quote a Rashi that clearly seems to say that way in more than one place, where, um, where, where it says that there was Adam, meaning the man with a divine soul, and then there was um, other human beings, Homo sapiens sapiens, um, the snake being one of them, right? He could walk and talk, so he was like Adam in many ways. But those were supposed to work as servants, not servants slavery, but servants as work together with Adam to unite to help him fix the world. So therefore, they were here. You see that it speaks about that Adam fell on a level, and then also mankind in general also fell. So what do you have to say that? Just Adam fell. There was only Adam. No, no, no. There was Adam and mankind. So we see that here we're saying that, according to this opinion, that um, there were already Jews and uh, I mean, yeah, Jews, the one with the Jewish soul, with from from the the meaning with the soul of Adam, and there were. Uh, mankind in general. Um, when I mean man, mankind, I don't mean the 70 nations. 
70 nations are technically also part of Adam. But um, let's not get, it can, it can get confuse, confusing because since there, it's two opinions and it can go two different ways, um, but at least you know that there are those two school of thoughts. Um, okay, so every, everything from his scene, everything fell and went on a lower level. Man could thus uh, anticipate from a very much lower level and it was in this state that children were born into the world. They were therefore all born into this degraded state. Uh, so wh whoever was born from Adam or others, right, um, then we, they, uh, it was a lower level than Adam. It, they didn't have that super soul um, that I will refer as the Jewish soul or the Israeli soul. Nevertheless, even in the time of, um, of, this, of his downfall, the elevated aspect that existed in man as a result of his true root was not completely extinguished. Um, meaning that he still had the potential to connect to the root of his neshama and uh, affect the world on a very powerful level. Adam was therefore not cast aside completely and could still return to the higher level. But now he could be functioning under an important disadvantage um, he would be unfortunately under an important disadvantage since he was actually on the lower plane, which merely had the potential aspect of the higher level. So God gave Adam's descendant a free choice at that time to strengthen themselves and strive to elevate themselves from this lower state and regain the higher level. So after Adam and Shamsin, everybody had the potential to go back to uh, the level that he was in Gan Eden and regain that soul. Everybody had that potential. God gave Adam's descendants a soul. The highest wisdom, however, determined the length of time best suited for such an effort and accordingly set a time limit for this generation. So anybody after Adam Arishon, Cain, Hevel, Lamech, Mesushelach, Enosh, everybody until um, with Noah and the generation of Noah, until Abraham had the potential to take the soul that Adam Aishon had lost, that, 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 that potential, that power, um, which is really the power of blessing, of bringing down Shefa, um, spirituality and elevate the world. In, in a way, uh, this is very much like the time limit now given to each individual meaning we're going to live up to a certain amount of time or 6,000 years. And when, uh, when we die, that's it. We don't have any more potential to do that. So uh, it's up to us to gain, gain our place in Olam Abba, to use our potential to go back to Gan Eden as much as we can to perfect ourselves and become spiritual. Every individual has a limited lifetime and it is during this period of time that he must attain both perfection and his level in the community of the future world as discussed earlier. So the reason in both these cases is that everything that involves efforts, effort must be limited in time. Obviously, because we're here for a specific time, we're here to work on ourselves. And once we are able to, um, if there was no time limit, then it would not uh, be helpful for us uh, and we won't be able to earn true, true effort and earn truly our place. So section three says like that, the highest wisdom deemed it fitting that this effort be divided into a period of the root for the roots, meaning the root souls and another for the branches, branches soul, uh, the original effort would thus be that of the roots, while that would come later uh, will involve the branches. So all the souls, all the people born until Abraham will be, so to speak, have the potential to become roots. And, um, and, 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 and if you're a root, then everything that you do affects the entire tree, right? 
So the human, human race initially had the chance to permanently regain its original state and rectify the spiritual damage that had been done. Everybody until Abraham could have done it, right? I Meaning everybody until Abraham could have been an Abraham and make the tikkun of Adam Arishon. The proper pro procedure, procedure, I don't know, I never know how to pronounce that. The proper thing to do <laughs> would have been for the roots and heads of Adam's descendants to first elevate themselves to the rectified level. Once this was accomplished, both the root and the branches will remain in this state forever since the branches always follow the roots. Okay, so the time provided for generations to function as roots, however, was limited. During this period, the gate was open and the opportunity existed for any individual to properly prepare himself and permanently be become a good and worthy root. He will then be prepared for a high degree of excellence appropriate for man in his original state rather than that of man in his fallen state. Okay, so it's like a bit of history, uh, spiritual history, um, What's happening? Since this individual would perfect himself as a root, he will attain this for his deserving descendants as well as for himself. They will all receive what he attained and will therefore all be able to remain on the level and state attained by him as their root. Um, so basically, he's saying that he's giving the explanation of why Avram became Avram because of the way Avram acted and, and what Avram was to do, he himself was able to attach himself to the root power of the world, the root soul power of the world of connection with God and the spiritual world. And because he, des he deserved that, then he merited that the, the, he merited that his descendants were privileged in being, um, protected and uh, given the opportunity to be more uh, closer to God than others until the Torah was given, basically. Because until when the Torah was given, anyone could still join. Uh, I mean, even after, but in, as, a, as a nation. Um, so, 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 people, so that was the special protection that why did Yitzhak deserve to, um, you know, and Yaakov and the 12 Shvatim to have a special connection with God. If it, they didn't do anything, it started with Avram. So it's really all in the merit of Avram. That's why we keep repeating, Beschus Avot. They were the root root. They started it, right? If they didn't start it, we wouldn't be here today. So thanks to them, uh, they were, we were all able to have that privilege, uh, first class, so to speak, um, travel uh, ticket <laughs> connection with God. The period, the period during which this was possible extended from the time of Adam until the generation of separation, Dora Flaga, when the Tower of Babel was built. During this period, there never ceased to be some righteous people who preached the truth to the multitudes, war warning them to correct themselves. These included such individual individuals as Hanoch, Mesushelach, Shem, and Ever. So all those people enabled creation to continue and for, um, so God kept the world standing because those individuals connected, not on the level of Abraham, but connected to some level on the level of uh, tzaddik or holiness, which enabled the world to endure, endure um, and keep the roots alive, so to speak, for the rest of mankind. Man's measure was filled, however, in the generation of separation, uh, when God confused all the language with our Babel. That's the, the time of, um, of Avram. God's attribute of justice then decreed that the time when man could be considered roots should come to a close. Until this time, things could become a permanent part of these roots, depending on what had transpired previously. With the generation of separation, this period came to a close. Okay, so I'm sorry, there's a lot of, of reading here, uh, but that's the, the, the thing with uh, Kabbalah, or, or like, you know, 
the spiritual history of the world, it's, it's Kabbalah is a transmission. We cannot, you know, there's nothing to debate about. This is how the system uh, works. So, God then scrutinized all mankind, perceiving the levels that should be made permanent in that generation's members according to their deeds. These things then became a permanent part of their nature and um, in their aspects as roots. It was thus decreed. They decreed they each should bear future generations, all possessing the qualities that were deemed appropriate for their root ancestors. Okay, so, um, so whether it's Avram and the other nations, okay, it's gonna, it's gonna come into more details. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to go too fast. The descendants of each of these individuals were thus divided into permanent groupings, each with its own characteristics and limitations. They were destined, destined to, fa to father future generations who would inherit the, these characteristics, just as members of any particular species inherit the characteristics of their forebears. Okay. According, according to the highest judgment, it turned out that none of them deserve to rise above the degraded level to which Adam and his children had fallen as a result of their sin. Not a single one had risen above it all. So from all the people who lived um, during that time, until Abraham, no one deserved to so n n nobody acted in a way that enabled them to be elevated and reach the level of um, Adam and earn that, that special uh, title of being a root or fixing the sin of Adam and Sean. So the, there was, however, one exception, and that was Abraham. He had succeeded in elevating himself, and as a result of his deeds, was chosen by God. So again, some people think, yeah, I know, Abraham was chosen. No, no Abraham was not chosen. He, anybody could have been chosen, right? Anyone from the, from, from, from the descendants of Adam, but no one, no one was able to really show enough, I guess, courage or do enough effort to reach Hashem and become a root. So Abraham was therefore apparently made into a superior, excellent tree, conforming to man's highest level. It was further provided that he would be able to produce branches and father nation possessing his characteristics. So that was, that was his gift. The world was then divided into 70 nations, each with its own particular place in the general scheme. All of them, however, remain on the level of man in his fallen state, while only Israel was in the elevated state. So now we have 71 nations. We have Israel and the 70 nations, which, you know, in Kabbalah is a little bit like um, the head and the body. Um, and the idea is that... Um, what they, they are supposed to work together, like, like one body. The head represents more the spiritual aspect and the body, the more physical aspect of the world, and they need to work together. The head without the body is not of much use, and the body without the head, for sure not. Uh, same is, or it can be compared as uh, the soul and the body, same thing. So after this, the gate, that w uh, the gate was closed, on the era of roots, things would then be directed and brought upon, about, upon individuals as branches, each one according to his nature. So it's important to understand that the, every, from the 70 nations, each one has his own particular uh, unique, um, I would say, unique talent and unique beauty um, okay, 70 correspond to the number seven, which has to do with the seven sphirot, which has seven, the seven notes of music, the seven, seven colors of the rainbow. Uh, everything at seven is when light comes into this world and like a prism, 
it gives all different types of uh, colors, qualities, and different, um, you know, gifts, different beauty. So every nation, each one of the 70 nations needs to technically find its own unique purpose, its own power, its own beauty, its own talent, right? I mean, like uh, you have America's got talent or, you know, Britain got talent. So that's really what we say. There should be 70 nations got talent and each one needs to know what its talent is and share it with the world. Um, the talent of Israel is to be the light to the nation, to teach the Torah, the concept of Torah and how to come close to God, how to be spiritual. Um, after this, the gate was closed on the Arab route. Okay, even though it may seem that man was originally the same as he is now, there is actually a great difference. Before the generation of, the, of, the, of separation, um, which means that at the, time, at the time of the Tower of Babel, man existed in the age of roots and was dealt with accordingly, meaning he has much more impact on the world. When this period ended, things were judged and, perma and made permanent and the new age began new laws of nature, so to speak. This is the age of branches, which still exists. Today, we're still in the stage of branches. And when we're gonna to come to Olamaba, that's the stages of the stage of the fruits, the fruits of the whole thing. Okay, any, any, uh, any questions uh, so, so far? Or everything is crystal clear? I guess it's clear. <laughs> so God's great love and goodness decreed that the branches of other nations will be given a chance. If they so desired, they still had the free choice to tear themselves loose from their own roots and through their own actions, include themselves among the branches of Abraham's family. So me oh, I have one question. Yes. So ideally, like the roots, like our root will be Abraham and we are the branches. And that's how we, like he gave us the opportunity to fix through uh, Abraham because he was in the, that period of time that he was able. Yeah, he do. was. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, but because you could say, okay, why did God decide to take the descendants of Abraham to Egypt, from Egypt and bring them to, to give them the Torah? Why didn't he do that with any other nation? Now it says he proposed the Torah to any, uh, every other nation. That's, that's why it says here, he allowed everyone to, even after Abraham, he made the time of where nations as nations, because now we're speaking about nation, root nation and branch nation, I'm not speaking about individuals. Until Avar it was individuals, then came nations. So the, the, from the nations, each one had the ability to, um, this, to, to direct themselves and attach themselves to Avram by choosing to follow his ways. Um, but what happened? This is what God meant when he told Avram, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Avram was just made the father of all converts, right? So anybody who wants to connect who, from, from, from the nations who wanted to connect to the root, just will convert and, and, and become part of Avram. This, however, will require effort on the part of the individuals concerned. Uh, which with, without such effort, they will remain attached to their own roots and retain their natural characteristics. So, um, okay, so, so right, that is speaking about the nations, not individuals, but, but it's, it says obviously someone we know as an individual, anybody can come and decide to attach himself. 
Um, it is also, so that's the difference between before Har Sinai and after Har Sinai. Before Har Sinai, any nation had the opportunity, right? If China or Rome or meaning, right, the, um, any, any um, nations of the 70 nation could have still branched themselves to Avram if they had decided um, until Har Sinai, until Mount Sinai. But, Obviously, we know this didn't happen. It is also necessary to realize that each individual tree is also divided. Very much as the descendants of Adam were divided in root, trees, and branches. Primary branches can thus be distinguished in each individual tree, and these branches are then differentiated to yield their particular members. Okay, it's getting very technical, mathematical. I apologize for that, but it's to understand, it's trying to ex explain the system, the spiritual system of how we, the world function, how our soul functions and how things unfolded. Abraham's tree consisted of 600,000 main branches. Okay, these were the, the individual individuals who left Egypt, and it was to them that the Torah was given and the land of Israel divided. Every Jew subsequently born is considered to be an element and descendant of one of these primary branches. Okay, so this was, so that's why it's 600,000 souls. Okay. Um, but again, we're speaking about root souls, but meaning the first souls, but they, they, they correspond to branches. Abraham was the root, and then came the branches uh, from Avram. These were the individuals who left Egypt. And, okay, every Jew, consequently, sorry, I read that also. Um, it was to these 600,000 original Jews that the Torah was given. When this occurred, the tree was said to have attained maturity. At this time, God also gave the nations a last chance. In his mercy, he had suspended their final judgment until the time that the Torah was given with the relation at Sinai, like I, I said before. He then offered the Torah to every nation, giving them the opportunity to accept it. Anybody, any nation, any one of the 70 nations had the opportunity to accept the Torah and could have been Jewish. It hadn't... It was not reserved for the Hebrews, meaning the Sinai Abraham only. That's why people have a misunderstanding of the chosen nation. There was nothing chosen. It was all what we chose. What we chose. You could be whoever you wanted. You could be a root or you could be a branch. But none of the nation decided. If any nation would have then accepted the Torah, it would have elevated itself from its lower state. As it was, none of them desired the Torah, and the judgments were therefore sealed completely. Uh, the gate was permanently, permanently, permanent, permanently closed, never again to be opened. It still remained possible, however, for any individual, and that's, that's the difference uh, between nation and individual, for any individual to convert to Judaism. In this manner, he could still include himself in Abraham's tree of his own free will. So anybody who converts after Har Sinai uh, is able to reconnect um, to to his uh, to to the root, which is Avram, part of Avram's tree, and um, yeah. And I have to to mention again that obviously, the, according to the Arizal, every person who converts is just a Jew coming back. Uh, in a way, it's saying like Adam Arishon lost different part of himself. So the soul of the head and the soul of the body, you know, got um, <clears throat> left him, so to speak, in split. And the head, the soul of the head being the Jews, um, are all those souls who, who convert back and come back to be the head for the nations. Um, and the non-Jews are being the body uh, who, who are gonna function as the body. Okay, 
I mean, it goes very deep in Kabbalah about all those things. Um, but usually those souls who convert are the holiest of all souls because they are the reason they are, so to speak, lost or put into different nations is um, as if to say that, let's say you have, your hand is hurting. So I'm going to use my brain to, and send a message through my brain to my hand and try to meditate for my hand to be elevated. So that message is like that soul going through uh, my body up to my hand and it stays in there um, and heals that place. Um, although that soul, though that thought is supposed to, it belongs really to the head, it went to the hand, like when you focus your intentions. Um, sorry, it sounds uh, maybe a little bit <laughs> too new age or Kabbalistic, but that, that's a little bit the, the idea. Um, so every Jewish soul is really a soul that was Jewish in the first place, but it's, con it's converting, it's coming back. And that's for the purpose of elevating the place where they were at the beginning. Um, okay, so now the decree, the decree, however, was not that the other nation should be destroyed. It only meant that they would have to remain on the lower level that we have discussed. So now the 70 nations are cannot become Israel anymore. They have to stay the 70 nations, but doesn't mean the 70 nations have to be destroyed, God forbid. This lower state would never have been meant for men if Adam had not sinned. It only came into being in the first place as a result of his sin. So that we said at the beginning that they were supposed, never supposed to be uh, Jews and non-Jews or Israel and nation. At the beginning it was all one, all Israel, so to speak. These nations still have the human aspect blemished through, though it may be, and God desired that they should at least have a counterpart of what was actually appropriate for all of mankind. Okay. So even though they didn't want to go back to the level of Adam they still deserve because they're descendants from Adam and and God allows wants wants everybody to deserve some good so he allows that those those nations to still be connected on some level um, on, on a certain level and and then he's going to explain now what's going to follow. He therefore granted them a divine soul, a neshama, somewhat like that of the Jew. Okay. Um, so that's important to know. That like some people, uh, I hate when people speak like that. They, they, they say the non-Jew doesn't have a neshama. No, you have the proof here. A non-Jew, of course, has a neshama. He's also, but it's. Um, so it's similar to one of the Jew, there's a distinction, even though it is on a much lower level. So, you know, it's like saying, oh, you have the, the lion and the cat. Okay, the cat is great and the lion, and, and it's not, you know, lower than the lion in terms of, you know, being alive and have a purpose, all that. But the lion is just much stronger. He has much more capacity and can do things that the cat cannot do but we love cats as much as lions. There's no, it's not racism, it's not thing, it's just um, what each one chose to stay like. You wanna stay a cat? Fine. You wanna be a lion? Please convert. Okay, so they were likewise given a commandments through which they could contain both material and spiritual advantages appropriate to their nature. These are the seven universal commandments given to the children of Noah. So for the, the, the children of Noah um, were given seven laws, 
we know they were given already to Adam Arishon, but it was given to, to Noah's descendants. And that's for the 70 nations. And um, that enables them to, as nations, to function in a way that is appropriate to be in harmony with creation. All these have been arranged from the beginning of creation, prepared for the contingency that men would sin. In this, meaning it was there in potential from the being of creation because God allows all possibilities to happen and we chose that path. And that was the consequence if we chose that path. In this respect, it is like, all, it is like other harmful things and punishment which were also created conditionally as our sages teach us. So it doesn't mean that, you know, we didn't have free choice, we had free choice. And if we chose that path, this is the consequence that we have to deal with. Those are the choices with the choices we make. In the, in the world to come, however, there will be no nation other than Israel. Okay, what does that mean? The souls of righteous Gentiles will be allowed to exist in the future world. Doesn't mean there will be no non-Jews, but in terms of, we're speaking about nations. So the world to come is not uh, the Yemea Moshiach. In the time of Moshiach, uh, Jews and non-Jews will be working together, praying all together in the Beis Amikdash. We're speaking about the world to come, which is after Moshiach come, after the 1,000 years of Moshiach, the 1,000 year of uh, Shabbat, right? The spiritual balance, and spirit, physical and spiritual balance with living with God. Uh, this is going to be the world of reward. We start 8,000, and there's going to be three stages, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Um, and, and from 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, there, there won't be any other nation than the Jewish nation. doesn't mean that uh, uh, we know a non-Jew can have Olam Abba. So we're only speaking about non-Jew, uh, about nations. They will therefore be secondary to the Jew, just as a garment is secondary to the one who wears it. All that they attain of the ultimate good will have to be attained in this manner, since by virtue of their nature, they can receive no more. So meaning that all the souls of non-Jews who are righteous will be part of our community. And maybe this, that one big community, so I mean, it'll be one huge mega nation Israel, and then connect to, to that will be all the righteous non-Jews who have um, merited to also receive reward, but they will, their reward will be not as direct as the Jews. They will receive through the Jews. Um, and, and, and the idea, as I understand, is just that there'll be a clear understanding of, uh, meaning it'll be completely pleasure, it'll be completely good, but it's a pleasure that be proportionate to what each individual had ch chosen to, to do. If I choose to invest in the spiritual world, then you're gonna receive in the spiritual world. If I choose to invest not so much in the spiritual world, but more in, in the physical world, then you're going to limit how much you're going to get there. So the ones who didn't invest as much as the Jews are going to receive, but not as much as the Jews. So because that's pure justice, everything is fair. Everybody gets what he deserves, basically. It has nothing to do with a Jew being better or not better. It has to do with individual making their, having free choice and choosing uh, for themselves what they want in the future in the spiritual world okay and we finish with that last chapter a uh, small chapter actually not so small okay let's try to do it fast when the world was divided into 70 nations god appointed 70 directing angels as officers in charge of these nations to watch over them and attach all their needs so 70 nations 17 angels every angel is in charge of that uh, actually the nations have to pray technically to uh, that angel, meaning, well, let, let me not say that yet, okay? But the, the, the meaning, it's, it has to go through nation. You can pray to God, but it has to go through that um, angel in order to reach God. That's the difference between the way Jews pray 
or the consequence of the, the spiritual mechanism, the matrix of how Jews pray and how non-Jews pray or how the tefillah travels. Thus, God does not oversee the, this nation except in a general manner. It is each one's directing angel who takes care of the details through the power that God gives, gives it to this purpose. God has told Israel, only you have I known among all the families of the earth. So Israel has a direct relationship. This VIP. This does not mean, however, that the details are withheld from God's knowledge. Meaning God knows everything that happens among the nations. But just these angels in charge of uh, appointed to watch over the nation as opposed to God himself. This cannot be true since... Um, okay. Meaning, it cannot be true that God doesn't have knowledge of everything that's happening, even to the nation to which he appointed an, an angel, since everything in all creation is perceived by God and revealed by him, to him. What it does mean, however, is that God does not oversee and directly influence their details. This will be further clarified in a later section. You know, it's, it's like the divine providence is not as strong. By Jews, you clearly see, you know, miracles like more than any, in any other uh, nations. God has made the rectification and elevation of all creation totally dependent on the Jews. So that's what's unique about the Jews is because the creation cannot be perfected without the Jews. It can only happen through the Jews. That's their special merit and their special uh, neshama. Um, to the extent that this can be expressed, we can just say that he subjugated his providence to them. So he allows them, so to speak, to direct his story um, and, and have an impact on his story more than uh, due to, through their free choice. Uh, so we Jews shape his story more than any, uh, more than, more than any other nation. Through their deeds, they can cause his light, Hashem's light, to shine forth and have influence, or on the other hand, hold it back and conceal it. The deeds, meaning that what's happening in the world, if there's darkness coming in the world or there's goodness coming in the world, all is going to depend on the Jews' behavior. We are microcosm of the world and we, we affect the macro. So it's like the heart of the body. If the heart is sick, the whole body suffers because of it. If the heart is healthy, the whole body benefits from it. So this, this, this is uh, what's happening between us and the nation. The deeds of the other nations, on the other hand, do not add or to or subtract from the state of creation, nor do they cause God to reveal himself or withdraw. So, meaning that if the non-Jews want to make, do something to make the world a better place, they have to help the Jew uh, fulfill the mission. It's that, that, that's how the system is made. Um, which is great, uh, but what they can do themselves is only to um, to sustain the world the way it is, to not make it worse. And they're supposed to keep creation going and not destroy it and enjoy the world and and make it keep it clean, and keep it nice and beautiful and harmonious. But um, so that, that's their main, their, main, their main thing, So and help the Jews fulfill the mission. All they can do is to bring about their own gain or loss and strengthen or weaken their own directing angel. Although God does not involve himself expressly uh, in the direction of the nations in details, it is possible that he should exercise his providence over them when it is required for the sake of Israel. So sometimes God shows his presence or in, interact with with more providence divine providence re revelation um with a nation for the sake of israel this may be because of maybe because of a single jew sometimes just because for one jew or for a number of them such a cause however falls under the category of means discussed in the previous chapter okay and this concludes israel and the nations uh, so it, it, it's uh, it's not an easy topic. I think it's uh, something that is um, hard to grasp anyway completely. 
um, the, I think the main thing to understand is that um, we have to be careful not to fall into the trap of uh, ego. Uh, and uh, I know with time and with the exile and history, Jews have started to hate non-Jews or demonize them and not like them. Um, yes, Jews and non-Jews are different. However, um, any any non-Jew who is righteous gets Olam Abba and is is uh, is also a holy neshama. It's just not on the same level because of the choice that it should to do. Each one, if he wants, can still reconnect to um, to be Jewish, but each one has his. Uh, uh, deserve basically what he choose to live. If I want to be a lawyer, I'll be a lawyer. If I want to be a doctor, I'll be a doctor. What do you choose to be? And you will retire with what you invested in. Um, so, but at the end, it's very important to love and respect every individual. Um, it's not about putting anyone down. It's all about understanding one's um, purpose, why one is in this specific situation, in this specific nation, or um, live in this, yeah, in this specific uh, generation or time or yeah, nation. And he has to find then what's the best thing for him to do. Um, and uh, gain, gain the most he can in this world to be ready for, for, for the next world. Um, it, I, it is advisable for every non-Jew to, meaning every one of the 70 nations, to uh, try to work with the Jew and help the Jew um, physically, emotionally, intellectually, uh, scientifically, um, financially, uh, whatever, in order for them to fulfill the purpose because the more they participate in Israel perfecting mankind, the more they will be able to, um, oops, sorry, the more, the more they'll be able to be able to have a reward in Olam Abba and be close to God uh, through through the Jews. Um, any questions? No. Okay, it's crystal clear. Oh Hashem, um, may we continue next week with more adventure. Uh, thank you for uh, listening. Bye.